Hello again, I am Dr. Eva Coleman and thank you for watching. Over the past several months, I have received many questions about breast cancer prevention. So in this video, I will respond to those most frequently asked uh, as they presented by my interviewer. So let's get started. Thank you, Dr. Coleman, and thank you for being here. I believe every woman wants to know if and how this disease can be prevented. So let's start with a question. Can we prevent breast cancer? Before I begin, I must clarify something. Uh, clinical trials for breast cancer prevention are underway. However, at this time, there are no guarantees that uh, the disease can be prevented. Therefore, the current goals of uh, prevention is twofold. First, to reduce as many risk factors for the disease as possible. And second, to increase as many uh, protective factors as possible. Well, thank you, Dr. Coleman. I'm glad you clarified that. Please give the viewers now some examples of those risk and protective factors. Certainly, I will. To begin, I want to point out three compelling reasons for understanding both types of factors. Uh, first, there are numerous types of breast cancer, and um, in certain cases, some risk uh, and protective factors may be specific to one or more of them. Second, current reports indicate a decline in most major cancers over the past 30 years, while breast cancer uh, rates have increased by 40%. Third, and even more alarming, recent studies forecast a 50% increase from 283,000 um, breast uh, cancer cases in 2011 to 441,000 cases in 2030. Given this forecast, uh, every woman needs to understand how to avoid the risk and protect herself from this disease. I will start with the risk factors, making it very clear that some of them cannot be avoided. For clarity, I separate them into three categories. First, there are unavoidable risks, then there are conditionally unavoidable risks, and finally, some risks can be avoided. So I begin with unavoidable risk factors, which includes aging, family history of breast cancer, personal history of uh, breast cancer, personal history of benign non-cancer breast uh, changes, Inherited genetic changes are uh, referred to as like uh, gene mutations, uh, dense breast tissue, breast tissue overexposed to estrogen made in the body called estrogen dominance. Being of Caucasian descent, and now I have to make a special point about uh, unavoidable risks. It is suspect suspected that exposure to environmental toxins and chemical substances called endocrine disruptors uh, cause breast cancer. But this has not been proven. Um, however, it is known that many of these substances mimic estrogen at breast tissue cell receptor sites. And this is known to cause um, overexposure to estrogen, which can lead to or cause breast cancer. Um, now I will move on to the conditionally una unavoidable risk factors, which include high dose radiation therapy to the breast or chest, inappropriately administer hormone therapy for menopause, uh, for example, self treating using high dose um, uh, anopause estrogen, uh, absence of medical testing and monitoring toxic exposure to cancerogenic substances in certain foods and preservatives, in household cleaning uh, products, in personal hygiene products, in plastic, metal, and other chemically-based food wrappings and containers. 
and from many pesticides. Um, and finally, I share with you the avoidable risk factors, which include obesity, alcohol consumption, uh, smoking, lack of exercise, poor diets, including foods that are processed, chemically colored, artificially flavored, food stabilized with chemicals for long shelf life, and food uh, with high pesticide residue or content. Well, this is quite a list of risk factors, Dr. Coleman. I had no idea. I suspect this may be new information for many of your viewers also. It's great to know, though, that many of them, many of these risk factors can be avoided. Yes, uh, there really is a great deal to consider. Um, but since there are no guarantees that that any of uh, one of us can prevent breast cancer, we must become aware of the risks. It is also imperative to that we make lifestyle changes to protect ourselves from this disease by reducing the risks. Well, this is really a great segue, Dr. Coleman. Um, please share with us your thoughts about the protective factors. Uh, most importantly, I want viewers to remember not all protective factors are within our control. Uh, however, we must try to protect ourselves to the greatest extent possible. So let's explore the protective factors, which include a good diet, wholesome nutrition with high cruciferous vegetable content to promote healthy estrogen metabolism, sufficient omega-3 fatty acids and soy isoflavonoids in the diet, daily exercise, proper weight management, maintaining proper percent of body fat according to age, height, and total weight, controlling uh, chronic inflammatory uh, conditions, having children, especially younger age, and breastfeeding our babies. The following may reduce risk, but are outside of our control. For example, late start of menstrual cycles, early menopause, uh, removal of ovaries before menopause when medically necessary. Well, this has certainly been very enlightening so far, Dr. Coleman. Do you have any other information you'd like to share at this time? Before we conclude, I want to make some very special points about breast cancer risk associated with the use of hormones for birth control and a postmenopausal hormone replacement therapy. Well, certainly I want to hear about it. By all means, Dr. Coleman, please proceed. Okay, I will begin with a hormonal birth control referred to as steroidal contraceptives. First, steroidal contraceptives, whether used orally, intravaginally, or with intrauterine devices, are established causes of increased risk for breast cancer. Second, the risk for breast cancer increases the longer such contraceptives are used. Third, hormonal contraceptives should not be used by anyone who has known risk factors such as a family history of breast cancer or an inherited faulty breast cancer gene or used without proper support in the presence of faulty estrogen metabolism. Fourth, for the most part, low dose combination estrogen and progestin con contraceptives have, have been used for several decades. However, the low dose pill is associated with higher breast cancer risk. Also, this birth control medication should not be used without proper patient testing and under strict medical supervision. Well, Dr. Coleman, I believe this information just as some of the information you've given us previously about contraceptives may also be new to many of your viewers. I agree. Now I will briefly address hormone replacement therapy after menopause. I am often asked about the safety of postmenopausal hormone replacement therapy. My response is the safety of hormone replacement therapy rests in the medical formulations and supervised applications. They are prescribed to restore balance in patients according to individual needs. 
These needs can only be determined by specific testing, health state status evaluation, and by through risk factor assessment for each patient. For these reasons and more, I am proponent of bioidentical hormone replacement therapy because the treatment is customized for each patient. It offers combined estrogen and progesterone from natural sources. These natural ingredients are synthesized to match the molecular structure of hormones produced by the body. Bioidentical hormone therapy also supports the heart while protecting breast tissue from overexposure to estrogen, which is a known cause of, for breast cancer. Uh, it combines estrogen and progesterone to improve one's cholesterol profile and decreases cardiovascular risks. It combines estrogen and progesterone to support bone strength and rebuilding. It offers progesterone for maintaining healthy brain function and provides um, many other benefits that slow down the aging process and promote vitality. Now, a final and very important point. Although safely administered, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy offers these benefits, I must make clear again, there are no guarantees that breast cancer can be prevented, even under the safest possible conditions. Therefore, my message to everyone is, understand that there are many forms of breast cancer and there are no proven prevention strategies available at this time. It is therefore imperative that we learn about the risk factors and responsibly do all that is required to reduce them. Dr. Coleman, I can't thank you enough for this very insightful interview. You are welcome. And to the viewers, um, I say thank you for watching. I am Dr. Eva Coleman at HarmonyMedica.com.